scenario that we have here says that a customer wants to implement the route reflector in their BGP environment to simplify the route propagation, explain the concept of the route reflector and how they differ from the configurations. Right. So in BGP, especially when we are talking about like IBGP, there is a rule that is referred to as the IBGP split horizon. This IBGP BGP split horizon rule says that the route that you have learned from one of your IBGP neighbor, they are not advertised to other IBGP router. Considering that everyone belongs to the same autonomous system number 100, means that everyone belongs to the AS number 100. This is the route 1.1.1.1 gets advertised to the router number 2. Since router number 2 receives the route from the router belonging to the same AS number, this will be like IBGP neighborship and IBGP route. This router cannot advertise the route to the other IBGP neighbor. So IBGP split horizon is a rule that says that the route learned from one IBGP neighbor are not advertised to the other IBGP neighbor. But if you want to like have the end-to-end -end connectivity from like 1.1.1 to 3.3.3, somehow this router one must know about 3, somehow this router 3 must know about 1.1 subnet. So what we can do, since in BGP it is possible that we can form the indirect neighborship, I can configure a neighborship between router 1 and router 3 and I can exchange these routes directly as well. So over this indirect pairing, router 1 and router 3 can exchange the route to each other and then of course they will be able to do the ping and trace. The challenge here, the problem here is that if, if there are like two, three routers, then this approach is okay, like this full mesh neighborship requirement that we have is okay. If three, four routers are there between three, four router, we can configure the full mesh BGP neighborship. But when we have like a lot of routers, seven, eight routers in our IBGP environment, and we want to propagate the routes from one point to other point, then configuring this full mesh neighborship might not be a very good idea. It is possible, still possible, but it is going to be like too much time consuming process. Right. So if we have like seven, eight routers, then the problem might have been. If let's say, for example, eight routers are there, then n n minus one divided by two number of neighborship has to be created, has to be built. So to overcome this BGP split horizon rule, BGP split horizon rule is there to prevent any potential loop in the IBGP environment. In case of eBGP, we have this concept called AS path list. So if the AS path list contains your own AS, you are not going to accept that prefix. That is I like uh, that is eBGP loop avoidance mechanism. When it comes to like IBGP, in case of IBGP, this IBGP split horizon rule is used for the same. Now, the point here is, if you don't want to implement the full mesh BGP neighborship, you can also go for this thing called route reflector. Basically, what I can do, I can configure this router as the route reflector. It is going to receive the route and reflect the route to the other IPGP neighbor. So route reflector is the device. The route reflector is the device that reflects the route from one IBGP to other IBGP neighbor. Right. Now, this route reflector, since uh, we are using this route reflector concept to bypass or to override this uh, IBGP split horizon rule, the problem is it may lead to a routing loop. It may lead to this routing loop. So what we can do, or actually we don't need to do anything. When we use this concept of route reflector, route reflector or when the route get advertised to the neighbor router, automatically this route reflector is going to add two things. One is called like originator ID and one is called something called cluster ID. So concept of originator ID and cluster ID is added when the routes get propagated to the neighbor router. And because of this, because of these two things, originator ID and the cluster ID, loops don't occur even in the IBGP environment even if you have used the route reflector concept. So originator ID is going to be the router ID of the router that has originated the prefix in this 
BGP environment, IBGP environment, and cluster ID. Cluster ID is basically you can consider this cluster ID as the similar to the router ID, but from the route reflector point of view. So either we configure this cluster ID by ourselves, otherwise it will be chosen exactly the same as the router ID is chosen. Anyway, so this device is going to have a cluster ID. It is going to advertise that cluster ID and the originator ID to the neighbor router. Then this router, if we have like more than three routers in the domain, maybe router number four is also there. And if we want that the router four should advertise the route to the neighbor router, then this also has to be configured as the router factor. Originator ID will remain the same. This router number three is going to add its own cluster ID before propagating the route to the neighbor router. So in that situation, in that situation, what will happen? Like this device is going to receive the prefix with the originator ID 1.1.1 and the cluster list 2.2.2.2 and 3.3.3.3. Those two attributes that we have originator ID and the cluster ID they are used to, in fact, control, they are used to form, they are used to control like if the routes are going to be accepted or not. So if due to some reason the prefix get advertised back to router number one, router one is not going to accept it because the cluster, because the originator ID is same as your own router ID. And if somehow the packet reaches to router number two or router number three, they will also not accept it because cluster list contains your own cluster ID. What exactly is a cluster? A router vector client and servers are referred to as the cluster. So we can configure router number two, configure router number three as the router vector devices, and uh, the, then they will be responsible to advertise the route to the neighbor router. So in the router vector, we have a device called router vector, then we have router vector client, and then we have router vector non client. So if we have a diagram such as, for example, router one, router two, router three, router four, something like that, router number five. And let's say we configure this as the router vector. How can we configure this as the router vector? I will go on this router. I will use the command under router BGP configuration, neighbor, neighbor IP, router vector client. As soon as I configure the command neighbor, neighbor IP, router vector client, this will become the router vector for this client. Neighbor, neighbor IP, router vector client is the command that we can configure to enable the router vector functionalities there. Now, the rule is if you receive a route from your client, you can advertise the route to the client. In fact, you can advertise the cloud to a route to a non client as well. What is a non client? Non client is a device for which we have not configured this command. A router vector client one. So if you receive the route from the client, you can advertise it to the client and to the non-client as well. If you receive the route to, from the non-client, then you can advertise it to the client. But if you receive a route from the non-client, you cannot advertise that route to another non-client. So non-client to non-client, routes are not advertised. Rest from the client to client, client to non-client, non-client to the client from all these devices like the routes get advertised and while the routes are getting advertised via the router vector the concept of a cluster id cluster list if i say and the originator id is added in the prefix so that the routes don't form like any loops in the network now the limitation of this router vector is that this is a router reflector. It has advertised all the route to router three. Now I want router three to advertise the route to router four. So I will need to configure this as the router reflector as well. Then there is router five here somewhere, like router five, router six, router seven is there. So all the routes are getting advertised to router four. Then I also need to configure this as the router reflector to advertise the route to the neighbor router. Point is that more than one router reflectors will be required in your IBGP environment if you have a big topology. So generally what we do from the design point of view, let's say we have like a lot of devices here. A lot of devices are here. Let's say, for example, a lot of devices are here and this is the physical connectivity. This is connected to some external autonomous system. What we do actually here, we choose one or two devices as the router filter, any two device, any two device we are going to choose as the router filter and we are going to form our neighborship 
with that cloud perspective. So everyone, like for example, this device is going to form the neighborship with this router reflector. Every device is going to form the neighborship with the router reflector. The way we deploy this route reflector is that this device is now going to form the neighborship with this route reflector. This will form the route neighborship with this route reflector. This is going to form the neighborship with this route reflector. Uh, then this is going to form the neighborship with this one as well. This is going to form the neighborship, neighborship like here, the neighborship is there. Here the neighborship is there. So there is no neighborship between like these non-clients to each other, but everyone is going to form the neighborship with this route reflector. So the routes will be learned, routes will be advertised to the route reflector and route reflectors are going to advertise these routes to the rest of the network. While advertising, we can do that path manipulation and all those things as per our requirement. Right. Now, if you have a very big network, if you have, let's say, for example, a very big network, in that situation, like this concept of route reflector might not be a very good idea. We can go for this thing called configuration. What we could have done instead of like, you know, configuring these devices as the route reflector, instead of configuring the full mesh neighborship also, we, what we can do, we can divide this big BGP network into smaller network, such as these two devices are now going to be formed. Uh, they are going to be part of a sub autonomous system. We can break this big autonomous system in BGP into smaller autonomous systems referred to as the sub autonomous system. Then this is going to be sub autonomous system. Then this is going to be another sub autonomous system. So we can, we can break the BGP neighborship. Like we can break this big autonomous system into smaller autonomous systems. And these are what we refer to as the sub autonomous system. So overall, this overall network is now going to be referred to as the confederation autonomous system. Confederation allows us, confederation allows us to break a big autonomous systems into smaller autonomous system. So this is one sub autonomous system, 100. This is another sub autonomous system, 200. This is another sub autonomous system, 300. So IBGP, IBGP, confed IBGP, Confed EBGP, Confed EBGP, membership can be formed. So we don't require any route reflector in that. If we had like multiple devices, let's say here, let's say for example, here we had like uh, one more device here in this. So I could have configured like this device as the route reflector. So route reflector with the configuration will also work. So route reflector differs from the configuration configuration. Why? Because in the route reflector configurations, we have like one or two router filters in the network. Everyone forms the neighborship with them, and then they advertise the routes to the rest of the network. Basically, in the IBGP environment, it is a responsibility of the router filter to reflect the route from one to another. While in the confederation, the uh, entire autonomous system is broken down into sub autonomous systems, and the routes get advertised from one sub autonomous system to another sub autonomous system. So, based on their based on their choice, if we have they, they have like medium to small scale network. They can go for this concept of the route reflector, but if they have like big network, then they should go for the confederation autonomous system. This is the difference between the confederation and the route reflector. Both are both the techniques that we have are there to avoid that IBGP split horizon rule or bypass that IBGP split horizon rule so that the routes can be advertised from one point to other point.